Hello and welcome to my studio. My name is Christabel Forbes and I am an artist. I've loved working from drawing since I finished my degree in fine art at Falmouth down in Cornwall. And being surrounded by nature, I think I've always been really excited to make artwork from my surroundings. Today, I'd love to share how I make works from nature and we can make a creative project together, working from nature and thinking about making a festival perhaps, or a poster representing a event based on nature. To begin with, I would love to share a little bit about how I make artworks uh, using ways of um, making marks and uh, different materials which I use and also show some of the works which I make. I thought I would share with you a short PowerPoint presentation with some of the images um, of my artworks and explain how I work as an artist. I'd love to set a creative project with you and make a poster that celebrates nature. I will of course guide you and share ideas as to how to make these posters before then asking you to upload them onto the Sustainability First website so that we can share. This is a short video just to give you a quick uh, help and guidance as to making your posters and it will be really exciting to share them on the Sustainability First website. Okay, I'm going to now share my screen and we can have a look at my PowerPoint. So firstly, my short introduction, um, I'm a London based artist and I split my time between teaching and my art practice. My inspiration comes from drawing using mixed media and colour my story. I'm currently establishing myself as a freelance artist and teacher. My practice is mainly concerned with capturing the essence of place and it is my ambition to add new styles and techniques in order to enrich my work. As a graduate in fine art at Falmouth University in 2015, I gained a place on the drawing year at the Royal Drawing School. My particular route of artistic expression has been through learning to observe a scene, to record its basic elements, and then to recreate it imaginatively. There's often a personal connection with my chosen scene. I've been especially inspired by nature and have been fortunate to work with other contemporary artists on artist residencies. I also am drawn to earlier painters such as Matisse and Vuillard as inspiration to making my own works. By collecting information from nature using observational drawing, I can then work imaginatively in my studio. I'm interested in broadening my practice to include different techniques of painting, printmaking and mixed media drawing. Here are some photographs of images by the artist Matisse, Henri Matisse, who is um, an Impressionist artist of the 19th century. And his way of working was to use lots of different um, bright colours and um, play with how he made marks. Um, he's died, but David Hockney is a contemporary artist and he works with, he's quite inspired by um, experimental artwork. And this is an image he made on his iPad, which I think is quite cool. So I mostly have been focusing on landscapes and um, I've been drawing from sketchbooks, which are then built up um, using steps by steps of um, colour and mixed media drawings in the studio. Um, and I split my time between working outdoors, out in nature, and then coming back to the studio and making artworks. Um, 
So here is an image of a larger piece of work on the canvas being made from this a uh, little study and um, as you can see I've got lots of different materials I like to use. These are oil bars and in here I've got paint pens and inks and felt tip pens and pencils, anything that I can experiment with. An artist residency is when you work in a new location and you get inspiration from making art. Here are some pictures of my latest residency in Shropshire. So there I am out in nature and uh, you have to be prepared for all weathers. It snowed, there was sunshine, I had to have sun cream, a woolly hat. Um, and uh, I love it because uh, nature makes me feel very calm and um, the, the sort of, I don't think there's anything more beautiful really than our natural surroundings um, and hearing the wildlife and seeing how the light changes depending on the weather. Um, and this is in a field with little lambs um, in Shropshire and I've got all my materials on the grass here. Here are a few drawings, oh well photographs of drawing from my sketchbook and um, working in the studio on a landscape um, picture um, of um, a, 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 in, uh, in Provence, in France. And here again, looking at the trees. I think trees are so beautiful to draw because you get all the light from behind. Um, so after having seen my artwork, I would like us to start thinking about making our own pieces of work. And we're going to make a poster to celebrate nature. Nature is such a wonderful thing and it's for everyone. So what sort of festival could you think of to celebrate nature and create your own um, way of making artwork? So um, what can you share with others? And what do you think the poster should look like? Have a think about that. I've also got a um, festival in mind, which is very useful and will help you with your inspiration. So the National Cherry Blossom Festival uh, is used um, to celebrate nature. And the cherry blossom or sakura are cherry trees which blossom in the spring. The cherry trees are a sign of spring and a symbol for the Japanese people. The word sakura is also a name which can be used for women. Cherry blossom is used to celebrate nature and is marked with a festival. This is a really good example to help you make a poster. I'm also going to use this photograph to help me demonstrate different ways of using materials to work with techniques. I'm now going to demonstrate um, different ways of using materials to um, try out new techniques. Okay, so trying out new techniques with felt tip pens, with colouring pencils, with watercolours, and with soft pastels. Okay, soft pastels are great because they are very dry and um, you can mix the materials, um, you can mix the, the soft pastel on the paper and cover quite a large surface area. You can smoothen it and you can also work with it quite thickly. Okay. So uh, it's also got very bright colour um, and really good for working over different materials. Watercolour is great for um, also having background colours where you can use a tiny bit of watercolour paint with lots of water and you can get lovely um, colour washes for your papers. And the more you, the less water you use and the more pigment you use, 
the darker your colour will become. So it's a really nice way of um, getting really light tones and dark tones, um, depending on how much water you use. And you can also get this lovely sort of dreamy effect when the colours um, blend together from the water. Okay. Um, colouring pencil is really good because uh, you can get the line straight away and you can also work from the side of the pencil and you can work on the tip of the pencil. You can press quite hard and get a really dark, rich colour and you can press very lightly and get a lovely light colour. So this is my experimental piece of paper where I'm trying different techniques out and seeing what feels right with what material. Okay, so colouring pencil is also maybe, um, you're maybe more used to it because uh, we use colouring pencils a lot um, uh, in schools or uh, just um, we're, we're sort of, it's, it's a bit like the, the graphite pencil, we're more used to using it. So you might feel more confident in working with it. Um, the graphite pencil is great for um, trying out different techniques very quickly too, because you only need, uh, you don't use any water, unlike the watercolor, and uh, you don't get so messy. The soft pastel is very messy. Um, and then you've got felt tip pens. What I love about felt tip pens is that you can get a direct strong mark. Think about the different techniques you can use in terms of um, working with lots of little dots, little marks, uh, or larger surface areas. You can make different patterns. So I'm thinking about different leaves, maybe, from my festival poster. Um, and you can work over the top of pencil, colouring pencil. You can't work over watercolour until it's dry. Neither can you work on the soft pastel because it makes the felt tip pen um, lose its colour. You can't, it, it, it then goes all dry and doesn't work. So don't do that unless, um, unless it's on colouring pencil. Um, and what's fun is that you can also put water over the top of felt tip pens and it, um, the, the colour of the felt tip pen seeps. So that's really fun. I think it's always really good to experiment with different materials and colour as well. So try out different shapes. So I've got bright, pink felt it pen and I can make these circles. Think about size, so changing from tiny little sharp size um, marks to larger size marks. Thinking about you could work with co continuous line, so taking your mark on a journey or you could think about filling up a surface area working around different shapes rather than in different shapes. And looking at observation from images or things that you can see in the room to help you come up with interesting marks. I, I think looking at the Blossom Festival, I'd like to do a poster about flowers as well and different types of wild flowers, I think. So for example, bluebells um, and use lots of different purples and blues and different, these, these pens are really thick. So working over the top. Once you've experimented with different mark making and different materials, you feel more familiar and you can start building your poster. I hope that was helpful. Now that you've seen how different materials are used to make different techniques and marks, have a play, try things, be experimental, and start building your poster. When your poster is finished, please upload it to the Sustainability First website so that we can share our ideas. Thank you.